Okay, it's time to talk a little bit more about the Eastern perspective and how that relates more specifically to Taoism. You know, think about, we're at the Temple of Earth here, yeah, where we have the altar of Earth. Think about the infrastructure of Beijing City. You have what we call the vertical axis. In the center is where the Forbidden City is, where the Emperor lives, right? We have the map of Beijing, we have in the center the Forbidden City. All the capitals are the same here in China. This is what we call the metaphysical infrastructure of the city, and it represents Taoist ideas. In the south, you have the Temple of Heaven, Altar of Heaven, the most important altar in Beijing, and in the north, you have the Altar of Earth, where we are now. Can you see that infrastructure here where human beings stand between the great forces of Heaven and Earth? The fundamental assumption about Taoism? So, First of all, what is Chinese medicine? Chinese medicine is a 3,000-year-old medical system that includes acupuncture, herbal medicine, and Asian bodywork, you know, um, massage, physiotherapy. It also includes regular life and rhythms, dietary therapy, and qigong, and taiji, exercises, and breathing. Yeah, these are all part of the original ideas of Chinese medicine. All right. More importantly, Chinese medicine holds that when the human body is kept in harmonious balance, health and well-being will naturally be maintained. This is very important. And these are based on the principles of Taoism. When we think of the ideas of Taoism, what is it? Understanding we are part of nature. Yeah, this comes before Chinese medicine, right? Taoism and the symbols of Taoism, whether they be qi, the ideas of energy, you know, junipers, a forest of junipers in the Temple of Earth produce good qi for ceremony and human consumption for morning exercise, right? Every tree exudes its own qi. All living systems have their own qi, right? The ideas of yin yang, yeah, cycling, these are all parts of Taoism. You know, Taoism is understanding we're part of nature. It's one of the three great philosophies of Chinese culture. Taoism, Confucianism, as we know the Chinese today often, where they're described as Confucian, and Buddhism. You know, Confucius existed around 500 BC, and not until a few hundred years after his death became a formalized, institutionalized kind of philosophy. Buddhism, longer history in Southeast Asia, but formally entered China, I suppose, around the birth of Christ. But we can say formally around the second century AD, actually, right? So, 2,000 years ago, around the birth of Christ, we actually don't have a lot of Confucianism and we don't have a lot of Buddhism. So what about the long history of China before that? We can say it's all Taoism. And Taoism is the indigenous philosophy of the Chinese culture. Right? Chinese culture and Taoism are part one. And then Confucianism, even Confucius was a Taoist scholar, right? And even Buddhism entered China so easily because it had so many similarities with Taoism. So they're extensions of this root philosophy. And this root philosophy is that we are a part of something larger. We are a part of nature. Where we're a small part of a larger natural order. And if this is the case, if we can understand the natural order, then we can apply those principles of the macrocosm to the microcosm fairly basic, yeah? So when we start to look at these ideas of, you know, remembering Chinese medicine is a microcosm of the macrocosm of the cosmos, or Taoist philosophy. So we just use these basic ideas. So highlighting the ideas of Taoism, we've got Qi, we've got Yin Yang, we mentioned before, we've got the five elements which I've already mentioned. We've also got concepts like Wu Wei, literally translated as doing nothing and everything will be done. Yeah, the ideas are more accurately probably natural action, like a tree in the forest, like the birds flying together, like a planet in the universe. There's no external controller. There is just balance in itself and balance within its system, and there is overall balance. And these principles are at the root of Taoism. Wu Wei, natural action. Find balance yourself, your destiny will be revealed and unfolded before your eyes. Yeah? So we go back to these root ideas as the foundation and we construct the science and the preventative health science around those basic constructs. Yeah? To finish, repeating, Chinese medicine holds that if the human body is kept in harmonious balance, health and well-being will naturally be maintained. Let's explore a little bit about the clinical arm versus the preventive arm of Chinese medicine. Yeah, we talked about the clinical arm, acupuncture, herbs, and body work. And what about the preventative arm, where I feel all the power is, where the balance and the Taoist ideas of vertical and the ideas of uh, 
regular life and dietary therapy and qigong and taiji and, and these, in, these ideas are part of what I call three parts of Chinese medicine. You have theory, you have prevention and you have clinical. Yeah? In university I studied a lot about theory. Actually before university I did everything that was about theory and prevention. I didn't know anything about clinical. But the university was very good at teaching me clinical ideas based on the theory. But it was a bit weak on the prevention. What I mean is, um, for example, they taught me a lot about the respiratory system. Yeah? The anatomy and physiology of the respiratory system. The diseases of the respiratory system. How to treat those diseases in accordance with acupuncture and herbal medicine. But no one really taught me how to breathe at university. You see where the academic and the theory and the clinical became um, totally biased against the prevention in terms of the prevention was encouraged but it wasn't part of the actual model of health. You know, you go to martial arts school, you just learn how to breathe. You don't learn anything about the, the respiratory system and the diseases of the respiratory system. You see, where is our bias here? You know, I feel like if we have all of that uh, theory, we become heavy in the body, like strong, stable, yeah? But, you know, our prevention provides us the wings to be able to do something. And we become like turkeys at university in Chinese medicine. When actually we need to balance this where, you know, sometimes the martial arts people are learning a lot about prevention. Remember, they don't have a lot of theory. And that gives them more like a butterfly. Strong winds, able to fly at least, but not a lot of stability or control. You know? So we want the balance between theory and prevention here. Like a swallow, strength, agility. Yeah. This is the kind of balance that I'm trying to provide here, where you have the theory and you have the preventive model, and when that fails, then you use the clinical model. Remember the ideas of the ancients? They said, um, the superior doctor heals before illness strikes. Yeah. Only when diet and lifestyle have failed should we use acupuncture and herbal medicine. Yeah. It's almost like what we did since the 1950s with Chinese medicine as a comprehensive management system. We got the round peg of Chinese medicine and tried to fit it or ram it into this square peg of Western science. And there's been a lot of challenges with that. And there's a lot of things that have been left out, a lot of things that it's integrated are, you know, the disease model. First of all, the reduction of science, it really is different from a holistic science. And we'll talk about that in the next video. And then really, what about the idea that health is really the treatment of disease? So we've focused on that in Chinese medicine, you know, in our, in our noble efforts to help people with problems and imbalance, right? The key here is positive intervention. Should action hold the key to your freedom, then you must act.